A little bit ago, I was looking through some photos and I came across a photo of my whiteboard two years ago when I was applying to jobs and I was just about to be homeless. And you can see at the top of the whiteboard, I have six weeks left of money and then I'm going to be homeless. And I wrote down stuff that I was selling on eBay so that I could try and survive over on the left. And I wrote down all of the jobs that declined me after the interview. I wrote down all of the jobs that declined me for no reason without giving me an interview. And I wrote down all of the jobs that I was interviewing with. And I remember back then I was writing all these down, thinking to myself, one day when I'm famous, when I have all this money and I don't need these companies anymore, I'm just going to put them on blast. I'm past that now. I'm over that. I'm over that phase. Uh, I was just really upset that they wouldn't give me an opportunity to work for them and give them value and I was just about to be homeless because of it and it's just really, it was a really bad time back then but instead what I thought we would do is we would look at each one of these companies and see if we can't figure out why they declined me and if these companies are still in business because a lot of the companies that I applied to were startups. If you're out there and you're applying to jobs and you're not getting anywhere and you've applied to like two or three or four jobs and you're like, oh, no one's responding, I got declined. Just look at this whiteboard. This is what it looks like with two years experience. And there's probably some people that are gonna be like, well, Josh, maybe you just suck. <laughs> maybe. I wasn't always like so anti-corporate like you guys know me now. This is what it looks like. You know, I've been declined over and over and over, ghosted over and over and over nonstop. So let's jump in and we'll just start with this company right here. Critical Mix has been bought out or renamed by Dynata. I imagine some people got let go, but that's interesting that Critical Mix is now Dynata. So I'll mark that off. Stream Detroit. Oh, I remember this one. They, they started talking to me and then they ghosted me as well. You'll find that a lot of companies that are small will, will look to hire people and then you could be in the middle of getting ready to quit your job to take this new job and they're just like, you know what, we don't have the budget for that. We've decided to go a different direction. So this uh, company's not even, this company's dead. Doesn't exist anymore. But Capella Education, they're dead. They don't exist anymore. Doesn't exist. Um, okay, yep. So definitely wouldn't have a job if I worked here because can't even can't even navigate the website. I'm just gonna go ahead and put red. So safe to say I probably wouldn't have a job there if I had gotten hired. It looks like Codelade was uh, bought out by Get File Cloud. Yep, so probably wouldn't have a job. If I worked there. 480 plus 240,000. That's really, really not going to go very far at all. I'm going to guess that I wouldn't have a job if I was working here right now. I mean, 2013 was their last round of money and six years have gone by. I highly doubt that this company exists anymore. This reactory. Yep, so this uh, this company doesn't exist anymore. I would no longer have a job. Wham. Yep, this job doesn't exist anymore. Company is dead. So now we're moving on to the companies that just declined me after I applied. Clever Tech. Clevertech is just a recruiter place. I guess I didn't do good on their test. Hired as recruiters, top toll. That was like six interview phases here at top toll. I remember I, I couldn't solve it. That was too hard for me. Hire view, uh, recruiter Unity said no. I even had a bunch of Unity games at the time that I that I showed them. Endzone IO. I remember that one. Let me look at my email. Endzone says we've received a very high number of applicants and we've completed our review. Unfortunately, we will not be progressing with your application further. The classic copy paste list direct they said it's an on-site position it's on-site i wanted remote even though it said remote so all right next action verb here's your classic from kevin hello we regret to inform you that your submission did not pass our initial screening round we will not proceed thank you for your interest yep here we go here's another one after receiving many qualified applicants we've decided to 
Move ahead with another candidate who we feel is a better match for this particular position is by no means a negative reflection. It merely means that another candidate possesses overall skills and experience closer to the position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already know. How many other people did you copy and paste this email to? Um, okay, yeah. this was a UK position in the EU. And they said, we won't be able to proceed with your application as we're focusing on time zones close to the UK with the US East Coast being the furthest we could consider. So I responded. So I said, hey, that's that's fine. No problem. I usually work an early schedule. That's basically the East Coast hours anyways. I'm open to work, whatever. Server density seems like such an awesome place. I'd love to continue the process if you're open to considering it. And he just ghosted me. I mean, all you really want to do when you're in the position of uh, the six weeks left to homeless is you just want to tell these people, hey, look, man, <laughs> I really need a job. But then you look super desperate, you know, and just crossroads. What I do? Um, oh, this was a recruiter. I interviewed with them and then they said no. Doist. Ah, here we go. Thank you for your interest in this job and working at Doist. We have now reviewed your application and we regret to inform you that it has not been selected for further consideration. Wish you every... Don't placate me, Alan. It's fine, bro. Just be like, hey, man. Uh, you didn't fit or just don't respond. What else we got? Healthify from Ali. Hi, thanks so much for your interest. We appreciate the time you took to learn about us and apply for the role. Unfortunately, we won't be able to move forward with your candidacy. We'll probably be hiring again. We wish you the best of luck. Oh, this this guy was uh, nice about it. I have to politely reject your application. We're very sorry, but we found another candidate who fits the role perfectly. Again, thank you for, very much for your time. The dude was nice about it. He made it very personalized, you know, not just copy paste. Oh, here we go. Thanks for your interest in our company, but your experience isn't a good fit for this position. Good luck. So for O'Reilly Auto Parts, I applied for a front end position and their interviewing style was absolutely ridiculous. Basically, I had a chat with a developer. I had a chat with two HR people about the company and what I know. Then they gave me a code test that I had to do live while I shared my screen with the HR lady and I wasn't allowed to use Stack Overflow or Google and all of the questions were timed. And um, basically I, I was just like, okay, well, I'm not really sure what to do. And she's like, well, I can't help you. It's like, okay, well, when I'm at work, I'm gonna use Google. Is that okay? No, no, you're not allowed to use any other sources of information. You just have to solve it right here. I'm like, okay, well, I can't, I don't know what to do. Um, I, I, I think I have an idea. I just forget this one piece. Let me, can I, you know, no, you can't use anything. So I just went and got my laptop and opened up my laptop and started Googling the questions and she heard me typing and she's like, sir, I, I can hear you typing. We're gonna have to end the interview. I was like, that's fine. This is a stupid way to interview candidates. Do you want someone who has canned answers or someone who can solve problems? And so that was O'Reilly Auto Parts. Never forget, that was the last time I ever talked to that. You should really fix how you do that with uh, some HR lady that knows nothing about code interviewing software developers on a timed screen share. It's, what are you doing? Dylan Software, oh, I remember this interview. Basically, he gave me a code test to make a React application that pulled a bunch of books from an API onto a page that I could sort and search through. And so I made it, I emailed to him. He said, thanks, I'll get back to you in a couple days. And then he ghosted me for about three and a half weeks. And after emailing him about six times, because I, I did it in time, it looked good, everything was, everything was fine. He emailed me back and said, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, I'm not really hiring for this position anymore. So, you know, thanks for spending your eight hours. The app is good, but you know, I don't I don't wanna hire you anymore. I, in, in, in hindsight, I should have asked for compensation for giving that kind of time, but Vibrant Software, they were looking for a basic front end developer. They sent me a code test to just redesign a mockup that they had sent me. So that's what I did and I sent it back. If I look at in my inbox here, I followed up like six times and then they just said, you know what? Uh, we're not finding anyone that's good enough for this position and we're not hiring them for this position anymore. So they kept me on the hook forever and then just said, yeah, we're not actually hiring. We couldn't find anyone that fit our culture. You know, we're, we're still thoroughly conducting. We wanna find the perfect fit for our team, so. This was the actual challenge that they gave me. Uh, measure basic competencies that are associated with essential work. Take this page here, this Photoshop file with all the rulers and stuff, and they wanted me to break it apart and make the uh, actual web page of this. Just hard coded HTML, CSS, jQuery for basic stuff. And that's what I did. And it looked just like this. And they said no. But they said no to everyone, not just me. So I fit, I remember this. This was just an algorithmic test that you had to do online and I didn't do very well, so they declined me. Uh, differential was just a phone interview, and then they declined me on the phone call, so that was neat. 
They were like, yeah, sorry, no, you're not a good fit. And I was like, okay. GitLab was for a software support position and because I didn't have enough points on Stack Overflow, they told me no. And when I said, I would like to improve in the future, could you tell me what I need to work on? The HR lady said, we've decided to move forward with candidates who had stronger answers to the questionnaire. I hope this helps. No, Chloe, it does not help, but at least you responded. She was like the only person who ever responded to it. Can you tell me why? I'd like to improve. Ah, team, okay. Team is a company here, local to Salt Lake City. I applied through uh, Recruiter. I did three interviews for it. Um, team was when I went into the company in a room with nine other developers interviewing for the same position. So it was like Shark Tank, which was really weird. And then they brought us in one by one and asked us the same questions. And they told me I was within the top three and you should expect something soon. And then the next day I called to follow up. The CEO had went on vacation and clearly we weren't a priority. They only hired one person out of the nine. The recruiting company kept calling team over and over and over and team was like, look, we know that you're charging us more than these developers are worth because you're recruiters and you want your money. We're not in a rush. We already got one. We're good for now. The CEO will be back in a few weeks. Um, thanks for everyone who interviewed. And so like I was held on the hook for a few weeks before they told me that like, yeah, sorry, they've just decided to not hire anyone except for one person. I was like, okay, Envision is one of those places. Um, it's just a software that lets you create mockups, clickable mockups. The interview was really cool. It's just a Skype call. The guy had like some Star Wars stuff in the background and I commented on it and we were having some bro moments and I thought it was really cool. He asked me questions and he smiled, he nodded. He's like, yeah, dude, that's awesome. Yup, yup, yup. And then he told me no. You know, it's easy to get invested when you think you did really well. And they're like, yeah, no, sorry. And <laughs> they don't give you a reason. That's what happened there. And that's what getting declined looks like that many times before you actually get a job offer. And you do the code test and you make them look good and you answer all the questions and then they just tell you no. And there's sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. So my recommendation is to just not get emotionally invested into these companies. You need options. Op options always reduce that feeling of, oh no, you know, I'm gonna, I'm really excited about getting this. If you have options, it doesn't matter. Okay, they decline me, it's fine. I got three other ones, no big deal. You always gotta have options. Don't get emotionally invested into these things. It can be frustrating, but for me, I mean, it was the best thing that never happened. For some of these jobs, for 10 of these companies, I wouldn't even have a job anymore because they don't, these companies don't even exist. So it's good that that never happened, but also I probably wouldn't even be on YouTube. It's like the best thing that never happened. Um, but if you're out there and you're applying and you're demotivated, you know, there's, there's just keep going. The only way up and out is, is through, that's it. If you enjoyed the video, maybe we can take a look at some other code tests I, I did for jobs way back. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I hope you guys are doing well and have a great weekend.